After returning, she received an invitation to a tea party from the Duke of Korg's house, with the reason being that the young lady of the family was coming of age. The letter contained courteous language. If I could hear advice from you, I would consider it an honor and cherish it for life. But if you do not agree, feel free to refuse, I will absolutely not be upset. She thought, does this mean I should definitely not attend? They probably sent the invitation just for formality. Still, she decided to go to avoid raising suspicion or gossip. When she arrived, the maids had prepared a neat outfit for her. She thought, they probably don't want me to appear timid in front of everyone. At that moment, a woman spoke up. You look younger than usual, Miss Michian. This was the Duchess of Quirk, Jason's mother. She smiled and said, if you were to walk alongside His Highness, the two of you would look like siblings. She replied, Miss Quirk has really grown up quickly. Are all the daughters of the Quirk family like that? Lady Quirk explained, our family is born to wield swords, even the daughters must quickly accept that mission. If so, you must be working hard not to grow old before the men, right? My family has lived in wealth for three generations, so I age slowly. She thought, Eris encounters enemies everywhere. Before she officially became the crown princess, they did everything they could to mock and humiliate her. During the tea party, some people deliberately hinted and mocked her. They said, if we had known Miss Michian was so bored, we shouldn't have invited her here. In reality, the first social debut should follow her mother's etiquette. Oh dear, Miss didn't know that the reason Miss Michian didn't learn was because her mother passed away early? Nevertheless, she still completed her debut wonderfully, extremely lavishly. Eris looked into her teacup and said, in Miss Morgan's eyes, am I that dull? Is it enough to just wave my hand and want that kind of letter? Yes. The tea is still hot, you are joking too much. Do I look like I'm joking? Are you now threatening to spill tea on Miss Morgan? With such a wicked nature, you'll be abandoned by His Highness. After that statement, many whispers circulated about what had happened at her coming-of-age ceremony. She thought, it's so annoying, they are no different from that prince who wants to expose me to the world. At that moment, Korg appeared, I apologize, but we have something important to discuss. May I borrow Miss Michian for a moment? It's extremely urgent. Without waiting for her consent, Korg took her hand and pulled her away. Let go of me first. Let go of my hand. I told you to let go, she exclaimed, shaking off Korg's hand vigorously. She felt pain as Korg gripped her hand so tightly. But he looked happily and said, I just wanted you to thank me. Thank you for what? Didn't I save you in that situation earlier? She was coldly, you should say you saved Lady Morgan instead. If it had been just a bit longer, I would have thrown that hot cup of tea right at her face. Yes, yes, our lady. But don't you have something important to say? I didn't come here just to hear you rant. I have nothing to say. I'm the kind of person who forgets things quickly. If you don't say it directly, there's nothing between us. So what if I tell the crown prince that you're mentally unstable and other things? He said, are you in your right mind? No matter how skilled a marquis you are, the royal family wouldn't allow someone like me to mix blood with the royal lineage. Good, if you don't say anything, it's fine. But don't think I regret the position of crown princess. I haven't loved his highness all my life as you assume. So you're saying you don't love him anymore? That's right. I've realized that those feelings were not love, just like with you. She though, if this were a story, Helena still wouldn't have fallen in love with Alex. As for Jason, no matter how hard he tries, being kind alone won't win her heart. She sighed, I know his highness will never love me in this lifetime. Now, I want to rest for a while, can you leave me alone? So, you want to die, is that it? Think whatever you want. You don't believe me no matter what I say. She looked at him skeptically, how could I trust someone who always threatens me like you do? He answered, threatening a lady with humiliating words is pretty despicable, isn't it? But I don't understand why I always act so vile in front of you. Eris replied, it's fine. Trying to look cool in front of me makes me feel even more nauseous. Honestly, even if I am despicable, you're going a bit too far. 
Unlike someone else, I treat everyone fairly. And by the way, do you really have nothing better to do than care about my affairs? If I step back, Lady Helena will become the crown princess. That's all I have to say, so I'll be leaving now. Ah, almost forgot. Honor will definitely clear his throat about how long it's taking to find a proper etiquette teacher, much longer than I expected. I heard there's someone who meets all the requirements of her employer. Hmm, seems pretty strict too. Who is she, anyway? She's the former wet nurse of the late crown prince. Looks like I've found the right person. Knowledgeable in royal etiquette and holds a grudge against the royal family. On top of that, she's the one who cursed Mayus the most. A perfect candidate indeed. Anakin, bring Lady Anto Blamer here. This chess game is all set. So, you want me to teach etiquette? I heard you're an excellent teacher. If it were Lady Michian, she would have completed this course when she was still a child, right? There's a big difference between who gets taught and who does the teaching. Who to teach? Why should I stand up and train some random girl at the Queen's command? Should I even tell you who this girl is? That's a crucial detail since I need to figure out where to begin. Lady Anto Blamer, she's the daughter of the Crown Prince's former wet nurse and now a lowly servant. The daughter of a traitor's family, what kind of lady is that? I'm supposed to teach an uneducated country bumpkin. You'll probably need to start over from the very basics, huh? As you may know, before I became the wet nurse for Prince, I was the instructor for the crown princess and also the wet nurse of the late crown prince, as well as the teacher of the queen. Eris Camley, why is the hatred towards the royal family even greater than I expected? Because I was once the queen's teacher, I was able to survive the great purge when his highness passed away. Immediately, she threw a cup of tea right into Eris's face. The only reason I set foot in the Michian estate, which I despise, is to witness how the man who was struck by lightning for the crime of killing someone else's child raised his own daughter. Emma immediately said, What on earth are you doing? An old woman clinging to her life because of past connections, and you dare treat a lady like this? What's going on? Eris told Emma, Stop it, it's fine, you can leave now. The elder woman asked, Why are you sending your maid away? Because I need to address matters that shouldn't be heard outside. Why do you think I insisted on calling you here? The woman said, Are you ashamed for forgetting royal etiquette? Can't even go to someone within the royal family for help? You're wrong. If that were the case, I wouldn't have bothered to remember you from the slums and track you down. I told you who you would be teaching, didn't I? Why does that girl need to learn royal etiquette? Could it be that neither Her Majesty nor the Marquis knows the truth? Only the Queen, you, and I know the reality. I think the common thread among the three of us is that we all hate those two men. Am I right? I haven't heard any rumors that Lady Michian hates her father. Letting outsiders know about internal family discord, what good is that? People will spit in my face. Even if I give up my position, it wouldn't be a big blow to the Marquis. I'll take it upon myself to bring that man down, so you don't need to worry. So the answer is yes. This old woman will teach Lady Michian. I'm a rather strict teacher, so you'd better be prepared. After that, she dressed simply and headed to the royal palace. People started whispering, isn't that Lady Michian? She's dressed so plainly I almost didn't recognize her. What's the reason for coming to the palace without being properly dressed? She thought, every time I come to the palace, it's the same thing. Why do people care about how others walk or dress? Wearing fancy clothes only makes it harder to teach or train. I've already drawn too much attention. It'd be great if simpler attire became fashionable. But most notably, Honor muttered, Please don't foolishly drag me into this, I beg you. Of course, how could this girl not be foolish? I just hope she becomes a little less so. You called for me, milady. You may enter. 
Lady Michian, why did you call for me? I thought of summoning you to the Marquis estate, but since you're a servant in the palace, you can't leave. Her Majesty the Queen has chosen me to be the one to properly educate you. Educate me? There's a long road ahead, so come over here and sit down. Wait, why? I want to know the reason why Her Majesty the Queen wants someone to educate me. You can ask her directly when the lessons are over. Lady Anto Blamer, you already taking up too much of my time. But, do I really need to ask more questions? At that moment, she slammed her hand on the table and said, Stand up straight, Lady Anto Blamer. Startled, Lady Anto Blamer immediately stood upright as instructed. Shoulders straight, now look at me closely. From this moment on, you are not allowed to avoid my gaze. Helena, from now on, I'm going to turn you into a proper human being. Up until now, Lady Anto Blamer had temporarily escaped the scrutiny of the nobility because they no longer regarded her as a threat. The crown prince could only protect her to a certain extent. She needed to show everyone that she could stand on her own. To do that, the first thing she needed to improve was her posture and bearing. How could one engage in a real conversation if they couldn't maintain eye contact? Her posture wasn't bad, so that was a start. Lady Anto Blamer, what is the level of your basic knowledge? Can you read and write? How about dancing? Writing? I've learned it before, but I don't quite understand it. What about the Palvan, Mikako, and Tulin dances? Do you know those? No, I don't. I didn't expect much anyway. In the original story, Helena didn't receive an education until she became queen. So, before we begin etiquette lessons, I'll teach you how to write. Open the book in front of you. She had to teach Helena the most basic things, from table manners to selecting appropriate attire and adjusting her gaze to appear elegant. Fortunately, Helena turned out to be smarter than she had feared. She even had to teach her how to ride a horse, but that could be saved for some romantic event with the crown prince or Jason's. What is it? Hmm, where are you going? I'm going to change my clothes. I'll be right back. Eventually, the dance lesson was a truly challenging experience because one had to master both the male and female parts of the dance. Reflecting on the earlier situation, you'll be Lady Michian's dance partner? Me? Me? Oh, did I just step on your foot? It's fine, just keep going. Lean a little to the right, straighten your posture. Once more. Anakin must have been exhausted from having to dance with me. After changing her outfit, she said, put the book down and step to the center of the room, we're going to learn to dance. Let's start with a Makako dance. Lady Michian will be my dance partner. What? It might feel a bit awkward during practice, but just for a bit. First, we'll do the Makako, then Pal Van, and finally Van. From simple to complex. Relax, the stiffer you are, the easier it is to lose rhythm. Too close. Van has to be danced like this. Okay, slowly now. One, two, one, two. Helena was always so beautiful, truly radiant. I wonder, when she falls in love, how much more dazzling will she become? No amount of poetic language in the world could capture her beauty. So, which will come first? Her falling in love with the crown prince or staining the royal sword with her own blood? At this moment, Helena asked Lady Michian, Do you intend to turn me into the crown princess? To be blunt, it's because the queen asked me to, so I agreed. But why? Lady Michian, don't you love the crown prince? I don't understand what you're talking about. Don't you see that no matter how much effort I put in, His Highness still loves you and despises me? Helena told me that His Highness has never asked me if I love him. Hearing Helena's words, Eris couldn't stop laughing. Seeing the surprised look on Helena's face, she added, You're asking why? It's because I don't care about your feelings. 
She thought to herself, now, Helena needs to break free from all this overprotection and start facing the truth. She said, this is a game between me, the Marquis, the Queen, and His Majesty. Someone like you, without any real power, is just a pawn. Do you think I became betrothed to His Highness because I loved him? Isn't that the case? Helena asked. How naive. Life isn't a fairy tale, after all. The crown prince is the most suitable person to back me up. Even if I loved someone else, I would still be engaged to the crown prince. If you can, try loving his highness. Because if you love anyone else, that person won't survive. You mean Alex would kill someone? Helena questioned. Alex wouldn't be that ruthless. Hmph, believe whatever you want. As she left, her thoughts were clear, even if she regrets it later, it won't be my responsibility. Even if the crown prince assassinates a few people, it won't faze me in the least. Why do you want me to marry his highness? Because I hate him. I'm sick of it, how could I bear to live with such a petty reason? Feeling wronged, angry? But I'm the kind of person who changes their mind over trivial reasons. Someone like me has the right and power to do so. If you feel wronged, then study hard. Become the crown princess, and then you'll have the power to seek revenge. I'll remember well that you need power to accomplish anything. If you've understood that, we'll resume the lessons now. I won't let you cry over this anymore. In your free time, practice what I taught today. I'll check during the next lesson. Later, she went to meet the queen. The queen asked, What have you taught the girl so far? You taught her noble greetings, table etiquette, the dances for the balls, and how to converse appropriately during the dance melodies. I also instructed her on things like how to select clothing and jewelry. It's still a long way before she can become the crown princess, but at least she has been taught the basics. I am grateful. I plan to introduce Helena at the coming of H ball for a noble's daughter. What do you think? I believe it's the right time. If it's the coming of H ball for a noble's daughter, it will surely attract the attention of the aristocracy. If we miss this ball, we'll have to wait a while, as we can't present the future crown princess at an insignificant event. I will continue to instruct Lady Anto Blamer diligently until the noble's daughter's coming of age ball. Recalling that in the original novel, Eris could not break off the engagement due to the emperor's orders, Helena would eventually become the crown princess. Even while the engagement couldn't be annulled, Eris witnessed Helena take her place as crown princess. In the end, she snuck into the bridal chamber and did something insane, poisoning Helena. The crown prince found her at the crime scene that night, and Eris was executed. If only that ending could be delayed until before this ball. The queen said, summon the ladies from the wardrobe department and personally choose an outfit for honor. I understand. If it's you, I'm sure you'll enjoy selecting clothes for your rival, won't you? Isn't that right? Of course. If Lady Anto Blamer chooses a childish dress, it would be quite awkward for me. After a long, exhausting day, she finally returned in the evening. Upon seeing the crown prince in front of her, she thought, of all times, when I'm finally headed home, this happens. I'll just pretend I don't know and get it over with. I've been dragged around all day without a single grain of rice in my stomach, so I don't have the energy to argue with the crown prince. As they passed by each other, the crown prince grabbed her hand and said, So now you've decided to ignore people? It seems I'm too tired, and my vision is a bit blurred. I apologize for my rudeness. Even if you can't kneel while asking for forgiveness, you should at least look at the person, he said. Please release my hand, your highness. I've been starving the entire day, so when you grabbed me, I nearly fainted. She coldly answered. What's wrong with you? Did you eat something bad? No, not something bad, I haven't eaten anything at all, she thought. If you're feeling sick, I'll call the doctor. At that moment, Jason's appeared out of nowhere, 
and standing behind her, she thought, this guy always shows up from who knows where. Please, just go somewhere else. Come on now, don't be like that. Have some expectations for me, will you? Jason said. Lady Michian, what exactly are you doing? I'm asking you, what are you up to? What am I doing? Just a simple act of goodwill, your highness, she replied calmly. She thought to herself, what is this? These two old fools, arguing right in front of me. Go ahead, fight. The atmosphere is about to explode into a full-blown conflict. I don't care if you two want to sever ties or engage in some strategic partnership, sort it out yourselves. I'm going home now. Anakin, come here, she called. Did you call for me? Forgive my rudeness for interrupting, Anakin rushed in. He lifted her into his arms, leaving the two old men dumbfounded. She said, you must hate looking at my face, so I'll excuse myself first, your highness. On the way back, they couldn't avoid the whispers. Did you see that? Lady Michian is being carried by a strange man. Even if she sees him as a servant, how can a proper lady entrust her body to a man like that? She's truly a disgrace. She has no right to be the prince's fiancé. Anakin. If you hate me too, just say it. When you feel that way, I'll try to understand. Eris told him. Now, she didn't care about being disliked, but she didn't feel comfortable at all. After all, in front of Anakin, she wanted to maintain some authority because she didn't want him to see her in a broken state. He said, have you forgotten? I swore to be loyal and serve you. But he knelt down, I said I wouldn't let any temptation or suffering stop me. If you want, I can swear one more thing right now. If one day you even come to hate yourself, I will never let go of your hand blindly. She replied, are you saying I can manipulate you however I want? Because you're entirely mine? He answered, that's right. She touched his face, I need someone someone who, even if they discover my twisted soul, won't mind. And you alone ignite the sharp sensation that pierces from my toes. I'm afraid you'll notice my heart beating, but perhaps being discovered is a good thing. She continued, the turning point is that I've fallen for someone who isn't that wonderful. I know this better than anyone. But at this moment, this person is just too charming. So, you've lost your mind, huh? Are you disappointed? How could this be? How could I be so infatuated with him? He came to me like a planet creating the earth. In the past, I was so pleased that he created me so uniquely. The next day, during class, she said to Helena, in half a month, I will be introduced at the young lady's coming-of-age ball of the Korg family. Helena replied, half a month? I'm not ready for that yet. No need to worry, there's enough time to prepare, she assured. The lesson today has ended, but please stay, as there's still something to attend to, she continued. Helena asked, is there work to be done that isn't related to studying? The maid replied, Lady Quirk has arrived, miss. She responded, let her in. The maid entered and said, good afternoon, Lady Michian. Today, I have come to admire your beauty and to bring some inspiration. Just in time, I found a beautiful silk ribbon that would suit you perfectly. She said, today, I didn't call the lady here to make clothes for me. What is the reason for that? I hope the lady will make an outfit for the girl sitting next to me. Excuse me, but miss, my clothes are meant for those of high status. Even if the girl sitting next to you is beautiful, it still wouldn't do. She said, didn't you secretly take my ceremonial dress and put it on this girl during the coming of age ceremony? The lady replied, at that time, it was a matter of necessity. How could a small clothing merchant like me refuse a royal decree? If so, then this time you must wholeheartedly make an outfit for this girl, as she is about to be introduced to high society by royal command. Within half a month, please design a dress for her to wear at the coming-of-age ball of the Quirk family. 
It seems to me that this girl has undergone rapid etiquette training, hasn't she? I doubt whether she will survive among the young ladies of high status. But if she wears the most expensive dress and appears in public, no matter how arrogant the noble ladies are, they will find a way to deal with it. Helena said, it's not necessary to prepare an outfit for me, it's perfectly fine. The cost must be very high. The expenses are covered by the royal family, so there's no need to worry. Eris told her. Helena quickly refused, let me go into the city to buy something. Eris, annoyed, slammed the table, refusing an excessive benefit is not in accordance with propriety. Propriety is different from acting in a way that is impoverished and lacking in understanding. Right now, you are behaving in a lowly manner, Miss Anto Blamer. She said, the dance partner who will stand next to you that day will be His Highness Crown Prince Alex, a person of noble status leading the country. Standing shoulder to shoulder with such a person while you wear market clothes? If you dress like a vendor, the nobles will not commend you for being frugal. They will ridicule the royal family, suggesting that the taxes collected are not enough to buy a proper ceremonial dress for a common dance partner? Think about it. If you do that, won't you be bringing shame to the royal family? Helena said, I understand, I will follow your instructions, Miss Michian. I'll take her measurements first. What color do you want the dress to be? Lady Quirk asked. Choose purple. Purple? Yes, that color really suits her complexion. Purple is the color of the royal family. Anyone not of royal blood wearing purple would be accused of treason. Indeed, Miss Michian's judgment seems to be quite fitting. In the following days, after trying on the dress, I will need to make some adjustments, but it shouldn't differ too much from this gown. Eris said, Lady, you have kept to the agreed schedule. She answered, I've stayed up several nights sewing this for you. You've worked hard, Madam, Eris told her then recommended, change her clothes. Maids replied, please follow me this way. We've changed her hairstyle, it really suits her age now. Which shoes will you choose? The second pair from the left. Since there's a height difference, a pair of heels would be better. What about jewelry? I like diamonds. With a necklace and earrings, it would be perfect. But Miss Michian, this girl doesn't have pierced ears. What should we do? Then pierce them immediately. Helena was held down and quickly had her ears pierced. She said, no crying, it will ruin the makeup. After 49 steps, Helena appeared like a princess in the magnificent purple dress. What do you think? They asked Eris. You're asking what I think. It's not bad, Eris thought. In truth, she looked perfect, to the point where Eris felt joy for the child she had educated herself. Properly made up, she exuded her own solemn elegance. In the past, I had been incredibly jealous of the young ladies adorned in luxurious and beautiful outfits. Not just me, most of the attendants felt the same. To be dressed up and dance just once in a lifetime was a dream. But after just one experience, I realized that beautiful things were more difficult and inconvenient than I had thought. Truly, some people can't eat enough, while others can't make ends meet. She said, things like this have nothing to do with beauty being difficult or inconvenient. What you're experiencing today is merely the beauty standards set by someone else. Anyone can be beautiful, at any time. At that moment, a servant brought out some passion fruit cake for the two of them. It looked very appealing and seemed delicious. But when Eris took her first bite, she discovered there was sand in the cream, while Helena's cake seemed ordinary. She sighed, now I am the betrothed fiancé of the crown prince in name only. Who orchestrated this? She commanded, that girl, come here. It turned out that this girl was the one who had falsely accused her before. The one behind this must be her. Eris said nothing, she simply raised her hand and slapped the girl, causing her to fall to the ground, making those around them gasp. She commanded, help her up. 
Why do you look down on me and follow Miss Anto Blamer? Is it because she treats you better or because she is more intimidating than me? The girl stammered, No, no, Mississippi. You've been following Miss Helena around, and then you happened to see who was behind her, the prince, using him as your shield to act arrogantly towards me, right? I don't want to scold a child, but knowing how to assess which side has more power isn't the mindset one should have at such a young age. Just as she was about to raise her hand for another physical reprimand, Helena intervened, Wait a moment, Miss Michian. You've taught her enough with words. Eris coldly replied, This little brat is acting so high and mighty. I'll show her how to treat those who look down on her and disrupt the order when she becomes the crown princess. Smack! She slapped the girl again, for this girl wasn't truly loyal to Helena, she was simply borrowing the tiger's might to curry favor with someone more powerful. To her, it was merely enjoying a temporary power, just like how the crown prince only believed his own words and slapped her face. Of course, this girl could betray Helena at any time. Helena continued, Please, stop it. This rude girl is my fault, so don't hit her. Miss Anto Blamer, please judge those around you carefully. Are they genuinely standing by you because they value you, or are they just hanging on because they want to take advantage of what you have? Recognize the situation accurately, when? Helena said, even so, it's fine. Even if I'm being taken advantage of, it's okay. Please don't use violence indiscriminately against anyone. If you're still angry, you can punish me instead. Just one request. Please promise that from now on, you won't raise your hand against anyone again. She replied, You dare to make demands of me? I swore to the gods that I wouldn't repeat my mistakes, just like how you were hit by the prince, no matter the reason. I can't justify violence, you've taught me that, Miss Michian. Eris answered, This girl is different from Helena. From the very beginning, she has relied on the power of others and doesn't have the right to hold power herself. The reason she can't talk back to the crown prince but is rude to me is due to her assessment of the power dynamics around her. Helena calmly, I will give her a fitting punishment without resorting to violence. I will have the girl who messed with the pastries and her accomplices in the kitchen fired. The girl cried, No, please, Miss Helena, I was wrong. Punish me, but don't fire me. Please let me stay. The girl continued to cry, pleading, Please, being fired is scarier than being hit. I don't want to be fired, Miss Helena. But they dragged her out, and of course, she was dismissed. Eris continued, You say it's okay if you're being taken advantage of? If those who love you heard that, they would be very sad. She left, thinking, I'm disgusted by this kind of self-sacrifice. She should know what it means to be sincere. The debutante ball for the daughter of the Quirk family was approaching. Today, she received a dress along with a letter. Dear Miss Michian, It's hard to believe that the chilly season has arrived. How did you find the coat I sent before? I've been busy preparing for the debutante ball and haven't been able to visit you personally, and I feel truly embarrassed. I promise to make your outfit from the first stitch to the last with my own hands. Please don't forget that my biggest client, my muse, is only you, Miss Michian. I hope you will wear this dress and shine at the debutante ball as you always do. Loyal guardian of hers. Opening the gift box, inside was a splendid outfit. She thought that at this level, it was not just a dress but a true work of art. Just one glance showed that it was far more intricate than Helena's dress. Why is that? Eris pondered. For that lady, this was probably just a means to an end. In the original narrative, that lady exploited Eris as a tool to establish her status in high society before eventually siding with Helena. I wonder if the story will be different this time. I can't predict anything. Moreover, I need to choose a suit for Anakin to wear. At that moment, Anakin spoke up from behind, this dress looks like it was made from a flower. 
She jumped and turned around, asking, How long have you been here? I've been here the whole time, Anakin replied. Good, let me take your measurements. You will be my dance partner at the debutante ball, so you need to wear a dashing suit. She wants me to be her dance partner? Anakin was surprised. What? Don't you like it? You don't have the right to refuse. No, it's not that I don't like it, but I can just wear formal attire. Formal attire? You have formal wear too? I wore it during the debutante ceremony. Oh, I see. I didn't notice Anakin back then, so I have no memory of it. She said, I'm going to buy an expensive outfit that your salary can't cover. You should just accept it. I can just wear formal attire. Even if I wear something expensive, it still pales in comparison to the outfit that proves I'm your knight. She raised her hand to his face and said, Oh, trying to be poetic now, huh? If you're so good at this, I might as well take my formal attire for a little adjustment. After all, it's a ball, it should complement my dress. Of course, do as you wish, my lady, Anakin replied. At that moment, Emma entered and said, Lord Quirk wants to see you. She sighed, that guy again. I didn't even give him a chance, so why does he keep behaving so rudely toward me? Should I refuse him, saying that the lady is hard to meet right now? Emma suggested. All right then, I'll decline directly. Anakin followed her. After a while, she and Anakin appeared, and she said, If you come here without saying a word, it's quite bothersome for me. Quirk, I invite you to leave. He replied, I'm only here this once. I heard that Helena will be attending the debutante ball of my sister. She sighed in frustration, Then you should look for the crown prince, not me. I won't ask his highness to abandon Helena and take me as his dance partner just for you. I don't feel indignant, on the contrary, I find it quite acceptable. I'm here to make a proposal. I mean, how about we try to be dance partners? You can think like this is a request I could consider. Sorry, Lord Quirk, but I had planned to take my knight as my dance partner. He said, a knight as your dance partner doesn't seem fitting for your status. Didn't you choose me at your coming-of-age ceremony for that reason? If you walk alongside that knight, people at the ball will mock you for being abandoned. Can you endure their contemptuous gazes, Lady Michian? I'm here to help you. Quirk's words were indeed accurate. No matter how extravagantly she dressed, everyone would focus on the boy beside her. They would judge her based on his rank. And they would say something like, How could Lady Michian be seen with such a boy? It seemed she had been abandoned by the crown prince to the point of not being able to find a decent dance partner. Even Lord Quirk had shown her some pity at the coming-of-age ceremony. Marquis Michian must have been at a loss for words. Jason knew this and felt confident as he continued. Anyway, if you want, I'll plead wholeheartedly to help you. I genuinely want to assist you. It was truly exasperating. Regardless, I'm not going with you. This is not the time to discuss it, good sir. If it were about pride, I would have accepted your offer already. Then what's the reason, he asked. Because I hate you. People can gossip behind my back, but being your dance partner would be more torturous for me. Just the thought of it is enough to irritate me. Jason clenched his fists, angered, and asked, Why do you hate me so much? I've already apologized. Eris smiled, Did I accept that apology? I don't recall. So you don't want to see me for the rest of your life? Is it because I initially showed hostility toward you? Is that the only reason? She replied, How is that just a minor reason? My trust in you has vanished. How can I believe you won't betray me again? If I prove myself, will you believe me? He asked. How will you prove it? You can make me do whatever you want. I don't understand why Korg is clinging to me like this, she thought. It would be more understandable if he liked me but this isn't the behavior of someone who has goodwill toward me. 
I want to know why Lady Michian rejects the kindness of others, he said. When you're tired, you should say you're tired, is that so hard? To be honest, Lady Michian only seems weak in front of His Highness, doesn't she? She always created a prickly exterior and pretended to be strong in front of those who weren't the crown prince. Someone like her would only attract more enemies. He stepped closer to her, gripping her shoulders tightly with both hands. You've realized that His Highness doesn't love you, but why do you continue to torment yourself? She understood that this man wasn't looking at her, he was looking at himself through her. Jason was forced to bear an unreasonable mission he couldn't refute. He saw her as salvation, a way to comfort himself from his past. She wondered just how much she had to despise others. With a forceful shove, she pushed him away and slapped him. What do you know about me? Don't see me as a weak girl you have to protect. Don't you really know? I'm not pitiful at all. The one who wishes for my misery is you. You're digging into my wounds. Asking me if I hate you? Do you really want to know? Mr. Quirk, I don't hate you. To hate means to care enough to hate, right? I don't care about you at all. I really have no curiosity about you, about how you live, what you think, what makes you happy or sad. I have no desire to know, and even if I did, I would want to forget everything. Because to me, you are a stranger. Even if you said you'd die tomorrow, I wouldn't shed a single tear for you. Then you don't need me, do you? he asked. She turned to walk away, that's right. If you know already, then don't speak to me again. Wait, my lady. Jason called after her, reaching out to stop her, but Anakin blocked him. Jason, furious, exclaimed, How dare you touch a noble's person? Do you want to die? Whoever touches my master, no matter who it is, my duty is to protect. If my master doesn't want it, I won't allow anyone to interfere, Anakin replied coldly. He turned to her and asked, What will you do? Please give the order, my lady. At that moment, she didn't respond, instead, she gazed into Anakin's honest eyes. They were truly beautiful, those eyes meant just for her. Without thinking, she reached out and gently touched his face for a few seconds. Then she remembered Jason was still watching her. She quickly withdrew her hand. I've said all I need to, don't bother me anymore. Just go back. If you need a trash can to dump your anger and sorrow, I'm happy to lend you a mirror. Don't look for someone else, deal with it yourself. She was referring to Helena because she thought if Jason approached Helena, she would definitely accept him. The thought of that scene was unbearable for her. As she reached the door, she turned to her maid and said, It seems our guest has lost his way. Could you please escort him to the exit? Yes, my lady, the girl replied. Once back in her room, she told Anakin, Go to the kitchen and get me some medicine, my head hurts too much. Understood, Anakin replied. As soon as he left, she stepped off the bed and locked the door. Her heart was in turmoil, she just wanted to confirm that no matter how stubborn she was, Anakin wouldn't give up on her. She hoped he would continue to strive for her sake. However, her overthinking triggered her stomach pains again, and she clutched her abdomen, wishing the discomfort would pass quickly. At that moment, Anakin stood outside the door. After several failed attempts to open it, he asked, My lady, are you asleep? Not hearing a reply, Anakin grew anxious. My lady? Just a second later, he opened the door and stepped inside. You're in a lot of pain, aren't you? I've brought the medicine. How did you get in? she asked. Because I was worried, I borrowed the key from the head attendant. She hoped that after locking the door, he would either break it down or climb in through the window, something more like a scene from a novel. After all, this was a fictional world, she thought. Anakin gently said, Please sit still for a moment, let me wipe your face. Watching how meticulously and carefully he took care of her, she couldn't help but ask, Anakin, do you like me? 
He froze for a moment. She thought to herself, just say you like me. I've never asked him if he loves me. But what would it mean to hear him say, I like you? After all, I'll be leaving soon. I'm being rational, I won't be able to return anything to this boy. She suddenly put her hand over his mouth. I told you not to say anything. I'm really cunning, she told herself. On one hand, I lecture Jason not to treat others as trash to vent his anger, while on the other hand, I almost do the exact same thing. I know this boy would never refuse me. Anakin gently took her hand away and placed it on his cheek. She thought, I like you, so I just want to show you my cool and strong side. Even though you're helping me, I don't want to be a burden. If you like me, are you choosing me, or is it the plot of this novel that makes you love Eris? I'm so scared, scared that because of you, I'll want to stay here. Scared that if I continue to stay in this world, I'll resent you in the future. She withdrew her hand and said, you can go now. Thank you for the medicine. Rest well, Anakin said before leaving. After a while, she thought he had gone, so she turned around, only to find him still standing there. Feeling a bit embarrassed, she sat up. I thought you had left. Are you in so much pain that you can't sleep? Anakin asked. Yes. Then I'll stay here until you fall asleep, Anakin said gently. She thought, I really hate being a burden, but I'm in pain today. Everyone has their sick days. This doesn't mean I'm particularly weak, just a little sore today. Just keep showing me that you're here, that you'll always be here. And so, she spent a restful night with Anakin by her side. Tomorrow was the Quirk family's coming-of-age ball. The last class had just ended when a commotion erupted outside the door. Get away! I heard Helena is here. I came to see her. Your Highness, this is the Queen's Palace, you must have a holy decree before entering. The attendant tried to stop him, but Alex was determined to barge in. As soon as he stepped inside, he pulled Helena behind him. Why are you with Helena? I. I insisted on inviting her for tea, Helena replied awkwardly. Isn't that right, Miss Michian? Hoof, don't you have any fear? If that thing harms you, what should I do? Am I a monster or something? No, you're worse than a monster. I'd rather you be a monster than have to worry like this. Your Highness, then why have you come here? I have something to discuss with you. Helena, come with me to the Korg family's coming-of-age ball. I will be your dance partner. She glanced at Helena and thought, I was going to talk to the prince today anyway. It seems the prince wants to be the one to decline before Eris rejects him. Alex turned to Eris. Are you also planning to attend the ball? Of course I will, your highness. How could I miss the coming of age ceremony of the duke's family? Then you'll be going alone? No dance partner? Why would I be without a dance partner? I have Anakin. Anakin is your bodyguard, he's not a noble. Last time, he wasn't even a nobleman. That remark is offensive, but Miss Anto Blamer is still a commoner as well. So you want to provoke the royal family? Yes, your highness. In this instance, I intend to sever ties with the royal family. But what about the Marquis? Of course, my father may restore the relationship, but it certainly won't be through me. Your Highness, soon we will be breaking off the engagement, and after that, we will become strangers. There will be no more encounters between us. The affairs of the royal family are not something you can manage at your whim. Aren't you the one who mentioned the betrothal between the royal family and the Marquis family? Don't you think your reckless actions will lead to a bitter ending? This has been approved by Her Majesty the Queen. Mother? Yes. So you should be exceedingly pleased. Haven't you been looking forward to this? Today is the day of the coming of age ball. The dress that the lady crafted and sent over is truly magnificent. If I don't groom myself carefully, my face will look pale. 
she thought, since I have the honor of wearing the lady's masterpiece, I must showcase it to do justice to her work. If my dance partner were that detestable prince or Jason Quirk, I certainly wouldn't have to go through all this trouble. The Marquis and Emperor will not attend this ball, so they will probably soon learn the truth that my dance partner is not the prince. Later than everyone else, I plan to play them for a fool. You look stunning, miss. Anakin walked in. Wow, I was momentarily speechless. There's a saying, men go hand in hand with their attire, and it certainly isn't an exaggeration. She ruffled his hair playfully and teased, is this style in fashion nowadays? Anakin smiled. You look beautiful. As they entered the party, they couldn't escape the whispers, a knight? The Marquis would surely faint if he knew. Just a Marquis? This is something that even the Emperor would shout about. She thought to herself, keep staring, each surprised glance only makes me enjoy this more. Miss Quirg approached and said, Miss Michian, thank you for coming. Today, I am the one who should be thanking you. Just then, Prince Alex and Miss Anto Blamer entered, making the gossip even more lively. People were whispering, could it be that the prince has really abandoned Michian? Just like at Miss Michian's coming of age ceremony. At least Miss Michian didn't appear with a common knight. That's true, because in this empire, the son of the Quirk family is the young man next in line to Prince Alex. It truly is the pinnacle of a beautiful couple in the worldview. Even if the prince were brought in by a truck, I still feel more sorry for Anakin. It's an honor beyond compare that you came, your highness. Two girls talk to each other, you are Jason's sister, so it's only natural. Organizing the coming of age ball means you will soon become an adult. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Quirk. I've heard a lot about you from your brother, but I didn't expect to meet you. It's been a while since I saw Miss Michian. Your Highness, Helena is here too. But why didn't you bring anyone to dance with? That doesn't suit you at all. The prince asked. Jason's answer, I asked but was rejected. Rejected? Yes, very coldly, he said, displaying an annoyed expression. Alex wondered if he had asked Michian. Helena innocently said, goodness, rejecting even Jason, she truly is a bold young lady. Jason bashfully approached and scratched his head. Eris glanced at Helena and thought to herself, nice, Helena. Today, I will cherish your innocence. The opening music began to play. Eris looked at Anakin and said, Anakin, let's dance a song. Of course, Anakin replied, taking her hand. At that moment, Jason tried to intervene, wait, Miss Michian. But how could he stop them? The two confidently strode forward, while Alex looked annoyed, even neglecting to invite Helena to dance, making her sulk. Eris smiled and said to Anakin, you practiced after being taught by your nurse, right? Anakin humbly replied, yes, not really. I thought I would embarrass you. She laughed, good thing I'm the only one who knows, you're quite charming. But from now on, you need to be careful not to let others find out. As the music changed, they continued to dance. People were gossiping, he's not even a knight with a title, right? I bet he seduced Miss Michian, the one abandoned by the prince. In reality, she just became an adult and doesn't understand the ways of the world yet. Eris thought to herself, let them gossip all they want. Maybe this choice of mine will become a weakness, and who knows, I might regret it soon. But I don't care because I'm in such a good mood today. I want to act a little recklessly. Anakin, I allow you to kiss me if you want, and right after that, oh my, in that moment, she felt like she had become the protagonist of this story. The entire ball fell silent. What am I watching? Oh my. Even the prince is watching, isn't he? She whispered to Anakin, how about we go outside? Let's sneak away. Yes, yes. She turned and bowed, this was truly a wonderful debutante ball. Miss, farewell from Quirk.
Yes, take care on your way back. The two held hands as they left the ball, leaving the commotion behind. At the ball, Fina asked Jason, Is it true that the knight is the lover of Miss Michian? Be careful with your words, Fina. Don't speculate wildly. But I did mention to you before that the knight escorting Miss Michian behaves like her lover. She's using tricks to make the prince jealous, her nature is truly cunning, just like her father. Aren't you one of the prince's companions? Why are you dressed so extravagantly? At that moment, Helena said, I heard Miss Michian has called off her engagement. So if the two really do love each other, it wouldn't be improper, right, Alex? Oh my, did you hear that just now? Yes, they called each other by their first names, right? Has anyone seen Miss Anto Blamer's dress today? If Jason announces here that we have not called off the engagement, wouldn't that make Helena his mistress? Fiona said, so from now on, Miss Anto Blamer will become the crown princess? If the prince favors Miss Anto Blamer, then all the better, right? No, to become a queen, one must be careful and affectionate like Miss Anto Blamer. She will become a kinder and more beautiful queen than anyone else. The gossip continued without any sign of stopping. Just then, someone announced, Your Highness, His Majesty requests your presence. Alex's face immediately changed. Your Majesty, I heard that you brought the nurse's daughter to the debutante ball. Are you even in your right mind? You need to keep Eris Michian close. Plead or beg if you must. You must bind that girl to you again. I heard that Queen Mother has approved the annulment with Michian. I can't believe that girl has also requested the annulment herself. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered because of the trouble that girl has caused recently? And it's only because the Marquis and His Majesty have covered for her that she has grown so arrogant. You were the one who said we needed to be cautious of the cunning of the Marquis Michian, so how can you allow her to stay close? She's already so proud, how arrogant will she become once she's related to the royal family? His Majesty replied, Alex, I understand your feelings, but it's not about trusting the Marquis to keep her close. His daughter, heiress Michian, is both a hostage and a shield, as well as a loyal servant of this empire, just like you. But Helena Anto Blamer is different. Because your mother was born and raised as a queen, she can endure, but in this frightening palace, how can that fragile and innocent child bear it? Helena Anto Blamer should only be brought into the harem and treated with kindness. There's no need to put the girl in danger by making her the crown princess. But what if the Marquis harbors hatred and attempts to assassinate that child? As you said, the Marquis is very cunning. Can you guarantee that you can perfectly protect your girl? What should I do now? Everyone only knows that you and Eris have called off the engagement. She's even avoiding me. I will use the Imperial Edict to summon Eris Michian to the palace. At that time, Get her drunk and make her carry the seed of the royal family. How can the annulment happen then, your majesty? That is the imperial decree. Do you intend to defy the imperial command? Crown Prince, there is a limit to silence, it can easily kneel before power. In the end, what is called power is necessary, not to commit crimes, but to prevent the strength that causes crime, not just to protect those we love, but also those we do not love. We must have strength. At that moment, the emperor was uncertain. Did Michian act without consulting him? Why would Michian do such a thing? A few days later, holding a vial in her hand, she pondered that another necessary element for a sacrifice was tears. It had been a long time since she had been outside. After the dance ended, she had to stay indoors to think about the identity of the sacrificial offering. In the end, Anakin didn't ask her anything. Why didn't he ask, why did you kiss me? That would have been a valid question, right? He always understood her unconditionally, yet she was the one who wanted to ask, Anakin, what are you thinking? What do you think when you see me? She was very curious about him, while he seemed indifferent. 
She liked him, which was why she kissed him, but what about him? She wanted to ask if he liked her too, but she wouldn't. She would always wait for him because he still had time. Before her time in this world ran out, he needed to let her know. According to rumors, if someone drinks the tears of a dragon, they will have their wish granted. The tears the witch spoke of could also be dragon tears. If she went to see Maddie now, she could take her there. If not, she would ask her to point out the location.